Hi everyone, very good morning and welcome back to Graduate B. Am I audible? Uh, good morning, Manisha. Good morning, Gaurav. So, today we are going to start with the government schemes of Ministry of Women and Child Development, right? So, we are going to see various components under this. But understand that uh, for the purpose of ease of implementation, these schemes have been segregated into three most basic parts. So we are going to cover that, right? And you will uh, witness that again, whatever we have read in different kind of government schemes, those same concepts apply over here also. You have to keep uh, thinking about the organization structure, who is the head of any particular organization structure, what are the contributory mechanism? It is a centrally sponsored scheme or central sector scheme. So these will all be the important points to discussion. Apart from that, a few of the initiatives that has been taken at uh, different different components, those initiatives are also very important. Like you have to remember what is the purpose of those initiatives. Fine. So let's start and talk about this. <clears throat> First of all, a little bit of introduction, right? How we have divided this and how we are going to study this. So organization of various schemes of ministry, we have divided this into three. One is Mission Shakti. One is Mission Vatsalya, right? And here is Saksham Anganwadi and Portion 2.0. I hope that you are able to see them clearly. My name is mentioned on the thumbnail, so you can see that. See over here, there are three ministry related components we have divided it. Now, what will happen by doing this is there is an ease. What kind of ease we are having over here? Ease of implementation. In Saksha Manganwadi and Portion 2.0, we are going to focus on the nutrition support for children, adolescent, pregnant women, lactating women, etc, etc. Right? In Mission Shakti, we are talking about safety, security and empowerment of the women. So all the schemes, there are so many schemes related to the empowerment, safety, security. All the schemes we have combined under one particular initiative. And lastly, we have got Mission Vatsalya. Under Mission Vatsalya, we are talking about protection as well as the welfare of children. Now, when I am talking about uh, children, when I am talking about children, I am talking about children starting from the age 1 till the age of 18, right? Uh, also, one thing I want to make you clear over here, the children who are into the age of between 10 to 18, we call them juvenile, right? We call them juvenile in the legal languages. They are also called for the protection related benefits. They are also called as adolescents, but we also call them as juveniles in the legal language. So we are going to study all of it. First of all, we are going to start with Mission Vatsalya, right? Under this, what are the important components? So structure as well as the contribution along with the purpose. These three things are the most important over here. And one more thing. See the outlay, 20,000 crores, 10,000 crores and 1 lakh 2,000 crores. They have been respectively given under the 15 finance commission cycle for all these three components, right? Now talking about Mission Vatsalya, what we are going to do under Mission Vatsalya. So here prior to 2009, there were three schemes. What were these three schemes? Program for juvenile justice for children in the need of care, integrated program for street children, and then scheme for assistance to homes for children, Shishugra. These three schemes were operating separately. But now we have combined all of them together under Mission Vatsalya, right? So all these three schemes were incorporated in a single centrally sponsored scheme. Again, an important thing, what you have to remember, it is a centrally sponsored scheme, Mission Vatsalya. Scheme is then renamed as Child Protection Service Scheme. It has been now subsumed under the Mission Vatsalya. So 
इंटीग्रेटेड चाइल्ड प्रोटेक्शन स्कीम दिस वन is now under mission vatsalya that's what you have to remember what is the aim of this particular mission that means we have to support the children who are in the difficult circumstances difficult circumstances means there are so many cases uh, have you ever heard about news is where the child care institution owners they are not uh, working properly there have been the cases of child abuse right child trauma etc etc that are coming from these child care institutions apart from that we need juvenile justice for all those children who are in the conflict with law conflict with law means they have done certain kinds of crimes for that they are receiving punishment right so these kind of children we know them as conflict in law and we are going to provide the schemes for those children as well over here yes so this uh, act poxo act was made for the protection of children right against certain kinds of uh, human risk crimes right so we are not going to cover that in over here but we are going to talk about the different things provide scope for encouraging innovative solutions as well as convergent action so what is our objective over here objective is to secure healthy happy childhood for everyone right we want to achieve the sdg goals we want to enable that so every children can achieve their full potential again the normal objectives that we have in every kind of scheme the scheme has been made for that is an institution a statutory organization so when uh, manisha is saying national commission for protection of child rights 2005 yes that has been a uh, made a uh, statutory institution for the protection of child rights fine now institutional framework how we are going to implement this particular mission over uh, our uh, country so understand all those who are new in the ministry related things or those who are watching this particular lecture for the very first time remember institutional structure for any particular ministry starts from the central level comes at state level and then we talk about district level as well we talk about that who all are going to be the implementing agencies over here that is very important part right who is responsible to perform the work so in here before starting i would like to tell you secretaries are important for the implementation right you are going to see that the secretaries are made head at the different different levels of this particular mission so let's see central level the mission vatsalya project approval board undertake the chairmanship of secretary ministry of women and child development very important piece of information please remember if uh, in mcqs they can also give you that who okay who is the chairman of mission vatsalya project approval board and what you have to tell they can give you the option like minister is also the head so please remember please uh, keep a tab on it they will scrutinize and approve the annual plans as well as the financial proposals that will be received from the states at state level there will be a committee which is headed by the chief secretary to monitor review and promote the convergence of the scheme next is funding so how we are going to do the funding of this please remember the kind of uh, scheme it is it is a centrally sponsored scheme so again central as well as state government both both have to come and contribute in it now i have a question yes it depends on the uh, schemes as well right implementing agencies they can be government agencies right they can be special purpose vehicles apart from that if private agency see private agencies most of the times private agencies are involved when there is any skill development project 
right in case of skill development projects i am talking about a general example i am not saying only in skill development uh, projects private agencies can be involved i am just giving you the example what happens is in case of skill development projects you need so many implementing partners because government alone does not have the capacity to implement a huge kind of skill development project so whenever private agencies are involved that is called as a partnership right i hope you understand they are called as partnership okay what is special purpose vehicle special purpose vehicle means any organization any company any corporation which has been made in order to complete a special work now what is that special work understand uh, right now we all know that there is a i'm just giving you the example right please do not link with it with the reality there is a project going on expressway project between delhi and mumbai now we all know we all know that it is a big project fine so what we need we need a special organization a separate organization for it that organization will be responsible for taking clearance from all kinds of ministry that organization will be responsible for watching whether the work of express way is going on in the correct direction or not so special purpose vehicle means when an organization is made in order to complete a specific work now uh, what i was talking about i was uh, going to ask you a question from you guys yes so i wanted to ask who does the implementation work in case of centrally sponsored scheme that is my question who does the implementation work in a centrally sponsored scheme everyone anyone can answer who does the implementation i repeat my question who does the implementation in case of centrally sponsored scheme good bharat it is state government fine so now see over here what is the fund sharing pattern that we are having it is 60 to 40 in case of central and state in the ratio of 90 to 10 for which kind of states for our seven sister state along with the two himalayan states himachal pradesh as well as uttarakhand ut of jammu and kashmir apart from that four union territories without which are without legislature it is going to be a 100% central share next is state child protection society now it is established under the juvenile justice act 2015 that shall ensure the implementation of mapping of mission vatsalya scheme how does the planning will happen so what you have to remember state child protection societies they are established this particular act it has a component uh actually no uh, in case of centrally sponsored scheme the funding related pattern it comes for central government as well as from the state government but the implementation work is done by the state government fine implementation on ground implementation i am talking about that is done by the state government if it is a central sector scheme then the funding as well as the implementation both will be done by the central government no doubt in that okay no problem now <clears throat> all these things swatch them very carefully they are the provisions under the juvenile justice act number one pro uh, provision is the you should be having a child protection society in the state this particular requirement is also important at district level that means at district level also you should be having child protection societies next is state adoption resource agency now there is a central adoption resource agency as well we call it cara right what this particular organization does so it promotes the inter country adoption and it also regulates the inter country adoption mission vatsalya provides support for the state adoption resource agencies in every state or ut see 
see in this particular case what uh, happens is adoption related thing is very crucial in our country so cara as well as the state adoption resource agencies both have been established so that inter country adoption can be promoted all the rules and regulations regarding inter country adoption can be complied with and this is the one stop destination if anyone wants to do the inter country adoption next is state child welfare and as well as the protection committee there shall be a state child welfare and protection committee under the chairmanship of secretary of ministry of women and child development next district magistrate and district child protection committee i have already told you that along with the states there should be a district level child protection committee as well who is going they are responsible for the implementation of the mission in the district level the next piece of information that we should look at who does the implementation over here so these committees will be under the supervision of district magistrates so authority what kind of work they are doing plus the authority under which they are working both of these are important piece of information now this thing we have already read the district magistrate is going to chair these particular committees in every districts they are also going to hold quarterly review meetings of the committees now talking about the juvenile justice board so why juvenile justice boards have been made see there are children who are in the conflict with the law but these children also need certain kinds of protection like i tell you if there is a person who is of the age of all of the 16 right he has committed a crime now if you are going to treat that 16 year old child means juvenile at par with a criminal who might be at a 40 years of age and if you are going to treat both of them in a similar fashion then this particular child which is just now at the age of 16 in future he is also going to be turned out in a hardcore criminal and we do not want that uh, it might so happen because of not having the mental ability they are they are committing such kinds of crime but as a society this is our responsibility that we should be reforming them so with this particular intention juvenile justice boards have been established they provide you the criteria how should take care of the juvenile related cases what should be the procedure what should be the like there is a provision that there should be separate police officers for interrogation with the A juvenile, right? You cannot keep a juvenile criminal or those who have committed crime with another hardcore criminals, right? Otherwise, they will start doing such kind kind of crimes again and again. So let's see the provisions. The Juvenile Justice Act 2015 it has made mandatory to establish at least one juvenile justice board in each district a very important piece of information have been asked in mcqs earlier as well so act says that there should be one justice board in each district i am not saying state i am saying district so this is very important this is where we tend to get confused now next is the composition as well as the functioning of this will be in accordance with the act Mission Vatsalya is going to provide infrastructure as well as the financial support to the state and UTs for facilitating this particular board in every district. Now there are child welfare committees as well. So it act says that there should be at least one child welfare committee in each district. So remember this thing. Juvenile Justice Act it wants to establish the infrastructure in each of the district of the state right composition shall be in accordance with the juvenile justice act how does it mention the mission vatsalya shall provide infrastructure as well as the financial support so this is the role of mission vatsalya now the next thing which i was talking about there will be a special juvenile police unit because see the methods of interrogation with a juvenile should be different from the methods of interrogation which you might be having any other adult criminal because the person is able to reform you can reform that person so your treatment should also be like that so this is the provision in every districts there will be special juvenile police unit 
now talking about the structure of the child welfare as well as protection committees at the local stage right we have already talked till district level but these are the structure at the local level that means if you are a if there is a rural area then obviously panchayati raj institution related structure will be implemented how jilla parishad committees block level committees they are going to deal with the welfare of women and children and gram panchayats also at the urban local body we have given the responsibility to standing committee of municipal level ward level committee of the municipalities so that they should be dealing with the women and child welfare easy one now next thing which is important is mission vatsalya portal remember this this portal is going to provide a digital platform related to various mis children in difficult circumstances which includes missing children abandoned children as well as the surrendered children you are going to provide a whole digital data so what you have to remember under this is if in an examination question comes that okay what is the purpose of mission vatsalya portal so you should be remembering it that it is a data source it collects all the data it displays all the data related to the child who are in the difficult circumstances we are not talking about women in difficult circumstances we are having a separate component for that can you tell me what component is that <clears throat> at the start of uh, the lecture we have discussed that can you tell me what is the component for the women in difficult circumstances anyone anyone mission shakti right mission vatsalya is for children mission shakti is for women so remember that now next is child helpline mission vatsalya in partnership with the states there is a 24 hour helpline service right 112 it is the helpline next is children under pm cares for children scheme now we are going to provide a funding as well out of pm cares the for non institutional care financial support at the rate of 4000 per month per child shall be provided to the child right this is the provision and if the child is in institutional care institutional care means it is under any particular child protection committee or any other child care institution in that particular case the grant will be provided 3000 rupees per month can you remember this pm cares fund any kind of information that you might be having about pm cares fund when was it established anyone when was it established can you remember that yes good pandemic 2020 right so it is an executive uh, developed fund right developed by executives and this can be taken uh, into use for different different purposes so right now we are taking it into use for this particular purpose we are going to provide the funding to the children who are in the need now next institutional services there are child care institutions child care institutions means they are residential care if there is any child who is not having suppose they who is not having parents or who is abandoned right he is having parents but parents are not keeping uh, that child with themselves so in that particular case these are the institutions where the child can live they provide the residential care they provide the food related care as well but there have been uh, so many circumstances have you heard the news of there was a child care institution in muzaffarnagar if i am not wrong right that particular child care institution was working even if there was a child care institution in mumbai as well and these particular institutions were are not working uh, are working without a license right they were working without a license and there were 
all kinds of not good things that were happening in those particular child care institutions so it is very important to review these working of these child care institutions time to time so child care institutions as envisaged in the juvenile justice act 2015 they empower state government either by itself or in collaboration with the voluntary organization now one of you were asking right that private uh, agencies can come up or private agencies can implement or not yeah great so now you can see over here for the implementation related purposes when the government needs so many uh, resources then at the time government can partnership with the private agencies as well and over here also government can partnership with the ngos with the private agencies etc etc even state agencies they can also come and uh, give their support under for being a child care institution now two things over here i would like to tell you there can be two kinds of children right in this mission vatsala there can be two kinds of children number one kind is those who need care right they have not committed any crime they are abandoned they are not having parents they are orphan or you can also tell them as that uh, they are having any kind of disability they are having any kind of a disease that's why their parents are not accepting them in and all i'm talking about the children who is in the need of care right so for those children who are in the need of care we are having these many kinds of components right and after that we are going to study children who are in the conflict with law where we are going to keep them right so suppose there is a child who is 16 years old and uh, he has committed a crime right a heinous crime we can say uh, like rape as well as murder and other crimes so any theft related crime so if they have committed such kind of crimes obviously we cannot leave them because they are child right there should be some sort of punishment wait for a second yeah <clears throat> so there should be some sort of punishment right and also we cannot keep them in the jail because otherwise they will turn into hardcore criminals so what is the possible option that we are having we can keep them in observation homes special homes places of safety etc etc right uh, one more thing uh, there was a case as well uh, in 2012 there was a nirbhaya case and one of the accused was a juvenile right so he was not sent to the jail he was kept in the bal sudhar grah right so that is also a very uh, example not very nice of the example but yes example where the children who are in the conflict who are kept under the child care institutions now let's see where we can keep the child who are in the a uh, need of care so children home they shall be supported established for rehabilitation rehabilitation of children in need there are special units for children with special needs due to physical as well as mental disabilities if any kinds of disabilities are there for that kind of children we are having a special units there are open shelters as well all those children who have ran away from their homes they are missing they are trafficked right working children child beggars child substance abuse who are victims of natural disasters etc etc all they need uh, support right for these kinds of children government is establishing open shelters as well now the requirement is these shelters should be registered by the state governments next is specialized adoption agencies they are recognized by state government they shall be supported to look after the children below the 6 years of age now these particular specialized adoption agencies they are going to take care about the orphans right abandoned as well as the surrendered children but these children are the below the age of 6 years and they can be given for the adoption as well now next is 
the variety of child care institutions that we are having for the children who are in the conflict with law see first of all is the observation homes right next special homes they shall be established for providing long term rehabilitation observation homes are for the temporary reception or for the suppose uh, the punishment has been given for two months three months like uh, the child has committed a petty crime so in that particular case these observation homes will come in handy apart from that if the per the rehabilitation is going to take the time then these special homes are there places of safety shall also be established to host the children between the age of 6 to 18 years those who are accused or convicted for heinous offense in conflict with law heinous offenses i have already told you those offenses which involve a punishment of more than seven years right so such kind of crimes if uh, a child has committed uh, such kind of crimes majorly these are uh, murder related uh, kidnapping and murder rape etc these are uh, they come under the heinous crime because uh, these crimes they shook the conscience of society hence they are called as a heinous crime fine now capacity of child care institutions the child care institutions they shall be supported normally to accommodate 50 children however for northeastern states the capacity of 25 children will be supported as per the needs of states now few of the non institutional care services non institutional care services means obviously you have provided them a place to stay for both children who are in the need of care as well as children who are in the conflict with law but you can provide some other kind of care services as also what kind of these services are sponsorship sponsorship means the mission is going to support mission is going to pay financially to all those people like extended families biological relatives who are providing and who are keeping that particular child with themselves right so anyone any relative who are doing this kind of work government can provide them the sponsorship apart from that foster care the responsibility of child if it is undertaken by unrelated family for care and protection financial support can be provided to them adoption finding families for the child found legally free for adoption so government can give them in adoption as well after care the children who are leaving a child care institution on completing the age of 18 years they may be provided with the financial support so that they can reintegrate into the society such support can be given from the age of 18 to 21 extendable up to the age of 23 years see what happens is once you leave from an observation home or a place of safety because you have committed a crime society does not accepts you very easily fine so because of that government can provide them financial support to set up a small kind of business of their own or any kind of activity that they may wanting to be performed right so such kind of things can be done now next is key points a monthly grant of 4000 per child is going to be provided under the sponsorship we have already read this if the child is under non-institutional care government is going to provide 4000 rupees per month if child is under institutional care then government is going to provide what 3000 rupees to the institution now next is convergence convergence means that this scheme is going to cooperate with other schemes which are in practice as well this is called as the convergence of the schemes so first of all we have got mission saksham right to harness the strength of anganwadi at the ground level collective baseline data as well as protection of orphan children so where will you get the data related to orphan children or the children who are in the need so anganwadi workers who are there in every villages they can identify it and they can provide the support which is needed to the child under mission vatsalya although these workers they are working under mission saksham but they can help you regarding the data collection next is mission shakti so for advocacy regarding the gender sensitization, linkaging Shakti Siddhan as well as working women hostels for 
those child who are leaving the child care institution after 18 years of age now i have never said that the child who is committing the crime will be a male only right they can be females as well and once they attain the age of 18 years of age and they are leaving the child care institution they can be provided support under the mission shakti so this is called as convergence that means this particular scheme is not going to work alone this particular scheme is going to work with allow other schemes of the ministry as well kara kara is central adoption resource agency so we have already read about it all those childs who are in the need of care those who are legally free for adoption we can give them and that particular rules and regulation will be overseen by the central adoption resource agency now few of the institutional support capacity building means that uh, personal support institutional support that we are we will be getting under this particular scheme so let's see this scheme mission vatsalya under this we are going to cooperate with the national institute of public operation and child development national institute of mental health and neurosciences lal bahadur shastri academy of administration bureau of police research and development why we are doing this national legal service sis authority they provide free legal services right nalsa as per their constitution they provide the free legal services and we all know that there are child there might be children who are orphan and they might be in the conflict with law so if they are in the conflict with law who is going to fight their cases they do not have money to give to the advocates etc so for those particular kinds of thing we have associated with nalsa bureau of police research and development they are going to keep all the criminal data records right and they are going to uh, help you with the data related thing why we have collaborated with the nimhans you are going to see in our next point so our next point is samvad please remember the name of it and what is the purpose of it very important the ministry has launched support related to mental health interventions for children in the vulnerable circumstances and the distress center under project in collaboration with the nimhans nimhans is your national institute of mental health as well as the neurosciences see you all might have uh, witnessed uh, the digital age uh, that we are currently living into it is good uh, from various perspective right it is very nice but sometimes there are severe disadvantages of it as well see if in earlier times if you uh, are yeah, i am talking about the era before 2014 right before that the uh, the children they used to play with the other uh, peers right everyone used to communicate one by one but now we are so much dependent on our mobile phones we have lost touch with the humans etc we do not talk much and that is surely is having a impact on our mental health so if there is such kind of problem then the government has come up with the samvad initiative right this is specially for children right so a uh, digital detox is also needed by everyone not just the children but everyone including us so this is an important thing important initiative remember this under it comes under which ministry ministry of women and child development who has launched it what is the purpose of it because if i uh, there will be a question in your examination related to samvad you might not be able to click it right so please remember this thing next is what we are go do, going to do under samvad so we are going to do counseling right there will be psychosocial counseling care which is necessary for both children as well as their care givers right next is grading of child care institution now this is a very important component i already told you that there are so many child care institutions which were in with the conflict of law two three of them have been uh, seen right if they were in the national use for quite some time and because of that and not even before even before that there was this mechanism of grading of child care institutions but what is important is 
the frequent monitoring the frequent inspection this is the crucial part so how do we are going to do grading of child care institution state governments State governments are going to take up the exercise to grade each child care institution. The grading shall be done based on, see what are the parameters over here, infrastructure, the quality of services, well-being of child, children health, the children who are there in your child care institution, whether they are healthy or not, restoration and rehabilitation of children, the grading of child care institutions including designing of parameters and indicators will be carried out in consultation with this organization called as National Institute of Child Development and Public Cooperation. And lastly, uh, one more important point. This is, uh, you can read it on your own, not important, but this one is important. Conducting a national child survey. So, a national child survey and development of child index in collaboration with Ministry of Statistics has been developed. The national child index, it has proposed to design and implement it in convergence, in convergence with the Ministry of Statistics, right? And child protection awards are also proposed so that dedication and hard work of the staff can be recognized which are providing the work related to the protection of childs. So tell me, uh, whatever I have taught in the Mission Vatsalya, is it clear to you? There are few initiatives like Mission, uh, your Samvad initiative apart from the helpline related thing, right from the child care institutions for the children who are in the conflict of law as well as those who are in the need. This is important for you to remember and the structure that who all are going to be at the central level state level as well as the district level which acts the in the various moments we have realized that the juvenile justice act 2015 has established has mandated that child welfare society should be there in every district right juvenile justice board should be there in every district so such kind of requirements also please remember along with the act is that clear to everyone At least say yes or no. Suna bhi ya nahi. Have you ever heard or like just have opened the lecture and uh, doing nothing? What about others? The day I will be asking uh, MCQ questions, no? At that day I will ask that whether you have heard or not. Fine. So, remember what three schemes are there under the Vatsalya. Now, tell me, which particular three components are there under Vatsalya? Tell me. Three components that have been submerged under Mission Vatsalya. Kara, okay, adoption related thing. This is so simple. All the juvenile related things you have included or the child related thing you have included, right? They are protection and welfare. Protection and welfare of chill, child, juvenile as well as the adoption related things. These are the three things that has been combined at a Mission Vatsalya. Super easy. Now talking about Mission Shakti, right? This is the second important thing that we are going to read under this particular ministry. Before that, let's read that what are the components that have been submerged under this. This is very important. See, earlier there were so many schemes like this who are who Ministry of Women and Child Development was carrying out. Now the need was felt that we should combine them under an umbrella scheme so that there is an ease of implementation, right? So what are these particular schemes? Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao, launched in 2015, all we know. Mahila Shakti Kendras, Swadhar Gre, Ujwala. Now this Ujwala scheme is different from the Ujwala scheme that we see in LPG connection. 
right this ujwala scheme for for the women who are in the distress who need help working women hostels gender budgeting research publication monitoring information communication one stop center one stop center provides the helpline it is available at all times for all the women who are in the need who are in the distress and who need assistance at the very moment so the one stop center works for them next is universalization of women helpline and then there are mahila police volunteers as well at the police station level we are having these mahila police volunteers who are who are made sensitive to the women related problems so that any women who is in the need they can come up and they can ask for help through the this particular initiative of mahila police volunteers now duration is during the fifth finance commission period 2021 to 2025 the norms of mission shakti will be applicable effective from the 2022 first april 2022 now what are the objectives over here objectives are super easy to understand right so all these schemes we know we have made these schemes for the women who are in the need of support starting from first providing immediate care and support to all those women who are affected by the violence put in place quality mechanisms so that victims of crimes as well as violence can be rescued protected and rehabilitated schemes like providing a uh, the women work, working women hostels so these kind of schemes supported swadhar grah swadhar grah is another place another residential care where victims uh, of uh, such kind of violences etc they are provided shelter accessibility of government services to the women at different levels next is awareness related concept as well we want to make people aware about the things like dowry domestic violence sexual harassment at workplace as well as the gender equality capacity building training of functionaries sometimes what happens is that government has launched up the scheme but the implementing persons like police people etc and other district officials as well they are not very sensitive and uh, i do not blame it on themselves sometimes they are very overburdened with the work but still they should be sensitive towards these particular needs so how they are made sensitive they are provided training regarding this correct next is collaboration with the ministries as well as departments so that empowerment can be done of women across all sectors for example ministry of child development they can uh, collaborate with the ministry of labor ministry of skill development right they can collaborate they can ask that okay the victims which are there in the swadhar grah as well as the other uh, scheme uh, other components how we can provide them the skill development so under this this ministry of skill development ministry of women and child development they can come and they can talk on it creating awareness for inducing positive behavior towards women and as well as girls and to prevent gender biased sex selective elimination right to ensure survival education development of the girl child now i just uh, there's one thing which i wanted to say see there are so many people who are preparing for uh, government examinations right and there are so many who are studying likewise also but uh, what uh, the one thing which i truly believe is that when we prepare for such kind of examinations when we read such kind of schemes in detail we truly become empathetic towards all those persons who are in the need we understand that what is the problem in society and actual problems which exist we also know that what is the solution for themselves so but still even after reading some people do not implement it in their lives so that is also required at some place we should be implementing all those which we are learning in the classes right truly implementing that if uh, see obviously when you are studying education does not get wasted right you are going to achieve whatever your dreams are but at the same time we should all try to be a better human as well 
that's what i wanted to say after reading this particular thing so we are going to complete the mission shakti tomorrow not today fine so this is it what we wanted uh, i wanted to discuss today and we are going to continue tomorrow if you did like this lecture do not forget to hit the like button and thank you so much for joining in